Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our 3D printed Super Strat build. If all goes according to plan, at the end of this video we'll have a brand new guitar take place and we'll plug it in and take a listen. Now this is definitely one of the most out there and outrageous Super Strats we've ever done. Let's hop over, take a look at the parts, and then we'll start the build. Now, of course, at the core of this build is this custom 3D printed Stratocaster body. You guys know I've never been a big Tonewood guy, but this is kind of taking it up to the next level. Just made of plastic and resin, super light. Uh, gonna be pretty interested to see how this guitar sounds. It's uh, printed for humbucker, single humbucker, but we're just gonna use two humbuckers as this is uh, kind of a super Strat build, of course. So there you guys go, that's the body. Let's check out the rest of the parts. Now, of course, to go with our 3D printed body, we need a pick guard that will hold our electronics and the pickups. This was actually 3D printed uh, by the same company. So it's kind of got like a cool texture to it. It almost looks like it's kind of sewn in some places. So yeah, that's really cool. When you're doing a custom guitar, yeah, there's all sorts of neat parts you could add. Um, any sort of pick guard would fit because uh, it is made for Stratocasters. And if you missed the unboxing of that body where you know I talk more in depth about it, I'll put a link above right here. Uh, you can see the full unboxing where I go through all the details of that body, test some uh, Strat parts on it just so I know that it's gonna fit. So yes, electronics, up next, this is the HH6. Now of course HH is humbucker and six is six different tones. So it's got some coil splitting abilities. This is obsidian wire. Uh, I'll link to all the parts I use in this build if you're curious. But yes, the reason I chose this is because of <laughs> the lack of soldering that goes along with obsidian wire. And I've used these on so many different parts casters. You do pay a little bit more money, but the convenience is just insane. So yeah, there's little uh, guide that comes and it just shows you which wire goes in which terminal and even the ground terminal has you know you don't need to solder it it's just like a little uh yeah screw point there so very very convenient to use this um, and as you can see a big old cts split pot there so we should be able to have three different positions for our humbuckers so three-way switch here yep that's right and then right here you can see that is your coil splitting pop that up and now you've got three single coils. So that's uh, in theory what's gonna happen. <laughs> so hopefully that all goes according to plan. That's our electronics. And yeah, what a great upgrade because you get full size pots and all the best switches and all that kind of stuff all in one unit. Like I said, if you were to source and buy these parts out yourself, it would be quite a bit cheaper, but the convenience is just, yeah, it's just such a great upgrade. And they have uh, all the other parts too, like, uh, you know, high quality Switchcraft um, output jack and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, all the parts are really high end, which is why uh, I always use them. Right, so we've got the body and the electronics taken care of. Next up was the pickups. Now, when it comes to parts caster builds, I always agonize over the pickups, trying to get just the right set that's gonna suit the build. So obviously I wanted something pretty modern, but maybe a little more understated because let's be honest, this is a lot to take in. There's a lot going on with this body. So I didn't want anything, you know, too outrageous because the body's taking care of that. Here it is, the Deactivator X for the bridge and the neck. I think this is gonna give me like the right kind of crunch in the bridge while hopefully giving me like lots of sustain and just like really smooth lead lines uh, in the neck pickup. And you can see it does say they're F spaced, which means for a Floyd Rose. So if your bridge is wider spaced, like a Floyd Rose, uh, this is perfect. But also if you have a narrower bridge, like on the Strat, it will work just fine too because they're rail pickups and you know it recommends on the website you can do it. Next up, let's talk about the bridge. Now, if you guys remember when we unboxed that 3D printed Stratocaster body, I talked a little bit about how we decided to do six individual screws for the tram instead of a two point. And simply because I wasn't sure how rigid that plastic would be and you know the forces to put a two point tram on there, you know, would it weaken certain areas? So we went with a traditional six screw tram system. But looking at it, I think a two point is going to be okay. So what I decided to do is use something a little bit more modern and unusual because I didn't want to put like a vintage trim on this ultra modern body, but I wanted to play it safe. So we had the option to go six screw, but I'm going to try this one. This one is the Sophia 2.22, a really modern looking Stratocaster bridge. It's actually top loaded. So the strings go through the top 
not through the bottom of the block. So it's a little bit different that way. Brass block, um, the top of you know your saddles that are so smooth and just look a little different than anything else out there. So I wanted something, again, pretty modern to go with our body. So that's the trim I picked out. Well, those are the main components of the build other than, of course, the guitar neck. Now I actually had a different neck planned for this build. I was gonna put a carbon fiber neck on this 3D printed body. I thought that would be really cool and of course it would be lightweight so it would combat, you know, maybe any sort of neck dive that would happen because that body is so, so light. But couldn't make that happen. There's so few companies on planet Earth making carbon fiber necks that will bolt onto a Strat or Tele and the waiting list is absolutely long. So I couldn't make that happen. So second best option that turned out to be, I think, pretty cool is, of course, the True Temperament neck. If you guys missed my video on this, I will link to it above. It explains all the craziness going on <laughs> with this neck. But I think, uh, yeah, the combination between, you know, the, the twisted frets here and the 3D printed body is going to kind of probably bend a lot of people's minds when they pick up this guitar. So I think in the end, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, and this is a very, very nice neck. So uh, there we go. So that's the final component of the build, the True Temperament Ultimate Intonated Neck. There it is. So those are the main parts. Let's get on and start putting this thing together. Now step one is going to be a little prep work, getting everything ready to be installed into the pick guard. So the electronics from Obsidian Wire, that should be really easy to install. Um, what we have to do is take our pickup wires and our wire cutters, strip back the outer casing here, and then expose our four inner wires and uh, yeah, strip those wires as well and get ready, uh, get them all prepped and ready to go into the obsidian wire kit. So that's step one. And then of course, with the little quick connects, uh, we can attach them to the pickups themselves afterwards, which is gonna be very, very convenient. So that is step one. I'll be back uh, once we have this all installed. Now, as you guys can see, we've got our two pickups installed into the pick guard along with our wiring. Very simple stuff. And thankfully this aftermarket pick guard, uh, everything just lined, you know, perfectly up and that switch sounds good and then we've got our Demarzio deactivator x so it's kind of going to be blacked out on the pick guard next up um, what we need to do is as you can see i've prepped the wire as i was saying earlier so we've got everything stripped and yeah then it's just a matter of putting in our quick connects here there's one here's the second one and Demarzio gives you like a ton of wiring, which is nice, depending on, you know, what, what you need. We don't need a lot because it's all going to be going into our Obsidian Wire uh, Quick Connect system right there. So that's our next step, taking these wirings and putting it into our Obsidian Wire kit. All you need is a screwdriver to depress the little mechanism, slip your wire in, let go, and you're wired up. Well, you guys, I've ran into our first problem. There's always one or two that crops up when doing a parts caster build. And this has to do with the location of the output jack right there. Now that is printed pretty tight. So when you, you know, just put an output jack on there, it fits perfectly. However, once you attach this and a cable goes into it, uh, it simply does not fit. Now I'll show you guys here. It's very clever the way he printed uh, a little canal for the wiring, which does work really, really good, I must say. So let me just slip that through. There we go. So yeah, it's really, really clever right there. He just printed a little tube for your wiring to go from the output jack into the main control cavity. But as I'll show you guys, it simply does not fit. And once you add a cable in there, the holes don't line up. You can see there's a good quarter inch there. So, and that's pushing all the way up and you can't put it on upside down or whatever. It's just simply too tight. So it needs to be extended towards the trim by another good quarter inch or so, because once you have it attached and a cable goes in, um, yeah, it's just not going to work. So the holes just simply do not line up. Um, and I think, I've been thinking about a few options for this. I think maybe one of the best options would be maybe even just to cut out a plate 
maybe out of old pick guard or something like that, that fits perfectly on there and then just do a straight plug in. That's not my you know, preference. I do have some 90 degree cables, so I will use that if I end up going that way. But I think right now, cutting out some pick guard, screwing it in and just putting the jack straight in, making sure there's enough clearance for the, the cable to go in, which I think there will be, and then just going with a 90 degree cable. I think that's gonna be my solution. I'm gonna keep thinking about it. In the meantime, I'm gonna mount up all the electronics into the body, which is a big step for the build, and I'll be back. All right, update time. As you can see, I've got the electronics all mounted into the body. The only thing I need to do yet is solder that ground wire into the trim claw and of course install the trim and stuff like that. But yeah, all the electronics ready to go. Um, I took an output jack from a Stratocaster, just a regular jack obviously would not fit with the electronics in there and I traced it out onto a black pick guard. Uh, the only thing I had that would cut through this other than like a jigsaw and it's such a small piece, I just didn't want to use it, was tin snips, like regular big wire cutters. The stuff's just way too thick. Uh, so yeah, there it is. So I've roughly cut this out of a black pick guard. I'm going to take a Dremel tool and just smooth out all the rough edges, but that's where we're at with this. Then I'm going to drill a hole into it. Well, three holes to mount it into the body here. And then also a straight mount. I've, uh, double checked that if I mount it flush like this, a cable can uh, reach to the bottom of the cavity. And if I had to punch through the back, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I don't think I need to. So that's where we're at with that. So I'm gonna take a Dremel tool, smooth out all the edges, try to make it look as nice and factory as possible. Um, and then I'll take the same jack and uh, trace out the holes, drill them into the pick guard <laughs> and put on the plate. Not something that you anticipate you have to do, but sometimes when you're working with such custom parts that, uh, you know, there's not a, a high volume of these bodies going out, but hopefully, you know, after the manufacturer looks at this video, they'll be like, okay, we need to like really test out <laughs> this before we print it. And then they can adjust their file and no one will have to do this again. <laughs> but as you know, I'm one of the first, that's what we're running into. Other than that, everything is going super smooth. Um, we obviously need to just add knobs and switches and that kind of stuff, but that's where we're at. So I'm going to head out to, uh, to the shop and use the Dremel and we'll be back. Well, you guys, I'm back. And while it's not the most elegant solution in the world, it is a solution. So yes, you can see the pick guard I cut out there, just rounded it off with the Dremel and then sanded it a little bit. So the edges aren't too crazy sharp. And the main thing is of course, that you can do this. And obviously, as I mentioned, I'll be using a 90, but it clicks in really nice. And that's the main thing. Uh, so yes, <laughs> sometimes have to think on your toes when you're doing a build like this. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Like I said, maybe not the best, but uh, the best I can do in a short amount of time. So let's keep going on with the build. Next up, let's go ahead and drop in that tram, that Sophia 2.22. And like I said, we have it drilled for six, but I didn't really want to put a vintage tram on this build. Now, when you're using your screws, make sure you have um, the kind that doesn't have the threading all the way up. You need that smooth right underneath uh, the top so that where it interacts with the tram, it's not going to be grabbing onto threading, which of course is going to mess a lot of things up. So we're going to go with two points here and we'll just put it down enough so that the edges of the tram are going to be interacting with sort of like the smooth portion of the screw. So it can do a little bit of that action. Okay. So we've got our screws there. And other than that, we're going to go ahead and put our springs on the back and solder up that back ground wire that is also on the other side of the guitar. Well, you guys, we are getting close. It's time to put the neck on. Now I have no idea how much I can torque, you know, sort of like that plastic neck joint. I'm used to wood, right? So you sort of get a sense of that, but we're gonna try and we'll just use the drill to get it kind of like snug, but not over tight. And then we'll tighten the rest by hand. So here we go. <laughs> this is gonna look pretty wild for sure. I hope it sounds good. That's the main thing. Like I didn't want to do this build and have it just be like a wall hanger or a toy guitar or something like this. Like I want it to sound really, really good. So we got our neck plate there. We'll just slide that into place and start a few screws here. Well, you guys, I've thrown some strings onto the 3D printed Super Strat and we're down to the details. I'll talk about what I did to the bridge in a second because I changed my mind on that as I was stringing it up. But now, yes, we need tip on our switch 
There we go. And since this is a custom build, I decided I think it would be cool to use some pedal knobs just for something a little, yeah, a little more custom. They have set screws on them. So you can just sort of like slap them on and then use a screwdriver to tighten them up. So basically that's what we're gonna be looking for. I think, uh, I think that's gonna look really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fix those. And then the other thing that we're gonna do is some DiMarzio strap locks or clip locks. So this end goes into, you know, there or here, and then the strap clips on. So we'll look at that in a second as well, just to secure it and to give it, you know, that super strat vibe. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use a screwdriver and tighten all of these guys up and put in our DiMarzio clip locks. And we'll be back for, I think, some tones. But I do want to talk about what I did with the bridge before we plug it in. So we'll be back. Well, you guys, we are officially done the 3D printed Super Strat with the true temperament neck on it. Locking tuners from Grover. If you watched uh, the neck unboxing, you know uh, I installed the nut and the tuning machines in that video. Um, but yes, here it is. Now, in terms of... Uh, the trim, I said I wanted to mention something and I want to weigh it, although it does not feel that much lighter than a regular Strat, so it should be interesting. I'm guessing right around seven pounds. I was hoping it would be like maybe like six pounds, but we'll see. Uh, you never know. So there you go. Now on the bridge, as I mentioned, I wanted a two-point trim, but as I was tightening up the strings, I sort of felt like the screws were bending forward a little bit just when I used two, so I did reinforce it with six screws there, which means, well, I blocked it. So there you go. <laughs> and I have one spring there just so that um, the grounding from that wire goes into the block, into your strings. That's why sometimes when you put your hand on your guitar, it suddenly be becomes quiet because the signal gets through uh, that's those springs into the block, which is into the ground. So yes, that's why that's there. And then we've got our DiMarzio clip locks. Yes, this is a really good system because it gets screwed straight into your guitar and then just clipped onto a strap. So it's very, very secure. Just a, a little bit of a different way to doing strap locks like that and off to the races. So since it's a super strat and I've never used this system before, I decided to uh, yeah rock the DiMarzio clip locks, which means you got one on the back, one on the front. So anyway, yes, that's what it's like. Can't wait to see what this thing sounds like. Such an unusual build. I never thought I'd be doing anything like this. Let's go ahead, throw it on the scale and then listen to some first tones. Well, let's go ahead and weigh it. As I said, it doesn't feel particularly light to me, but you never really know. So here we go with the clip locks and everything, full weight of the guitar. I figured it's probably around seven pounds or so. Let me just flip that there. Oh, there it is, 6.97. So it's bouncing between 6.9 and seven pounds. So not particularly light, but yeah, as I said, it felt like a, a regular Strat kind of to me. So there you go. Um, let's plug it in and take a listen. Well, you guys, here it is. First tones on a brand new guitar. 3D printed Super Strat. There is not much of a body to it. Just a little bit of plastic. What is it going to sound like? Well, let's find out together. So we got the DiMarzio Deactivator X. Neck pickup completely clean. I just want to know if it's going to sound like a regular guitar. So let's start off clean in the neck and just, yeah, see what it sounds like. Here we go. I'd say so far so good. That neck pickup, so nice and big and warm. Let's try splitting it. Well, yeah, we definitely have six tones and to my ear, this thing sounds fantastic. Uh, I'll have to do like, you know, this versus a wooden guitar or something, a little tone shootout in the future. Let's add a little gain. This is a super strat. We got to test out these DiMarzios with some gain. Here we go.
So here are my final thoughts on the brand new parts caster, the 3D printed Super Strat. Really interesting build, definitely a head turner with the combination of that true temperament neck and the 3D printed <laughs> body. But really, you know, as I said in the, the neck unboxing and when I installed it, it really doesn't slow you down too much. Um, so that's really, really cool. Now in terms of like working with a 3D printed body, well, it was first time for me for sure. And I would not, you know, be scared to do it again. It's pretty cool. And, you know, barring a few little issues like this that we made kind of work, um, yeah, you know, it's not too bad at all. And to my ear, like when I plugged it in, I didn't think like, wow, this has some weird frequencies attached to it or anything like, oh man, like, yeah, it's got no low end or it's got no high end or anything. It sounded balanced, especially, you know, played clean and stuff like that. It sounded like any other guitar to me. And like I said, I've never been like a tone wood guy. And this, I think just solidifies it. Like I said, I might do a little shootout, uh, in the future where I compare like, you know, an actual you know, alder bodied strat or something like that, uh, up against this, just to, just to confirm my suspicions. But yeah, on first plug in and everything, it plays nice. <laughs> it sounds great to me and yeah. Uh, so what a fun build. Uh, like I said, I always love it when I can find things that people are doing to the guitar that make it a little bit different. And uh, this certainly fits the bill. So hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along on this build. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got lots of great guitar content lined up for you guys going forward. Other than that, I'll link to all the parts that I used in this build as per usual. So the body, the trim, the pickups, all that kind of stuff will be down in the video description below. If you're like, hey, I liked that part or I liked whatever, um, then you can find it for yourself as well. So there you guys go. Hopefully, uh, yeah, you enjoyed the journey and this was uh, something really unusual and a ton of fun. So anyway, hope you guys have a great week. Take care.